le plaît beaucoup d'être ici pour la sixième fois. Euh, malheureusement, je ne peux pas les euh, donner ma conférence en français, il faut changer en anglais, mais euh, euh, mon accent est terrible. Euh, je m'excuse. Uh, so, uh, the talks today uh, have been about uh, ourselves talking to ourselves. Most of the people in this audience are big supporters of free and open source software, software libre, logiciel libre, but we need to uh, get the word out. So let's see, how do we make this go? There we go. The session uh, coming up is called digital training, but that has two meanings, and I'm only gonna talk about one of them. The first one is to use digital technology to train people, so we will have some discussion in the panel about MOOCs and other kinds of online education. But, but I wanna talk about how we teach people about digital technology. Um, the question really is who speaks for open source in the larger world? Now in France uh, and in Brazil and some other countries, the situation is quite good because the uh, leaders of uh, political groups and the leaders of technology have been strong advocates and the decision makers have heard the message. But now we have coming up on the 24th and 25th of October, uh, a meeting of the Conseil Européen, which is only about software, only about computing. So who's going to talk, who's going to represent open source there? And it's important that open source have a place at the table. And I think that's one of the key messages. So who do we have to teach? Well, the business and government decision makers and the people who influence them, journalists, consultants, instructors. We need to, in, we also need to talk to because the government goes out and they spend money for these large systems and they need to understand that open source software is the solution for exactly the reasons that Patrice was, was saying uh, a few minutes ago. Of course, we also wanna teach students who are learning about computing and those students can be very young and they can be you know, all the way through their uh, undergraduate and graduate education. And finally, the general public. You know, the general public knows about computing as users. They know about it from what they see in the media, television, movies, and so on, but, but they don't really understand what the difference is between proprietary and free software, and they don't understand the freedoms that come to them by virtue of using free software. So it's almost an evangelical activity, and I, and I chose that word, I think, carefully because we are evangelizing for our products and our ideas. It's not quite religious. I don't, I don't wanna think of software as a religion, but, um, but, but we do have to be willing to speak in favor of open source and the reasons why we prefer it. So what do we need to teach? Well, of course, the first idea is that free and open source software is everywhere and that people are using it all day, every day. When, when I started working on open source, which was really a long time ago, back in the days of Berkeley Unix, um, you know, proprietary software was everywhere and uh, nobody knew what open source was. And today, most software professionals know what open source is and it's the propri proprietary vendors who are uh, a smaller number. Now, of course, Oracle gets 60,000 people to come to their open world conference, so Oracle is not going away anytime soon. But uh, we wanna teach people that Floss is everywhere and how do you find it? Why should you use it? What are the business issues around it? We still have issues in companies adopting open source because they don't understand the licenses, for example. How do you evaluate it? We have long standing mechanisms. We know how to evaluate proprietary software, 
people go out and write reviews about proprietary software, do we have the same kind of reviews of open source software? Often we don't. And so when an organization goes out to evaluate software, it's sometimes hard for them to compare fairly proprietary and open source software. The people doing the evaluation may have a preference personally one way or the other, but if they try to do a quantitative evaluation, it's sometimes it's harder. There is nobody there to sell the open source software, whereas the vendor of the proprietary software may take you to a nice lunch. And we also want to teach people about how to develop flaws and how to contribute to projects, how to be part of a community. Even if you're not a developer, you can be a tester of a browser and you can give feedback to the development team. You can translate documentation. There are things that people can do that enhance the value of open source software, even if they're not experts in PHP or something. So, indeed, Floss is everywhere. A few years ago, it's no longer the case, but a few years ago, you would go into an organization and talk about open source, and they would say, oh, we don't use open source. Right? Yeah, oh, right, sure. And then we would run these little programs, and they would discover that they had open source in a lot of places they didn't think they did. Well, now today, we all know about it, right? They have Linux, they have Android, they have other open source uh, platforms. They're doing open source data and content management. I discovered uh, last summer that there are about 150 no SQL, open source NoSQL databases. It's unbelievable. Now, only a few of them, of course, will survive, but, but that's a big number. There's open source virtualization, open source enterprise service buses and service-oriented architecture, cloud computing, and even now in the Internet of Things, when you look at all join and you look at Contiki, uh, there, there's, again, a very significant open source component. And these things are very important for us because they're going to allow us to build the kinds of trusted systems that we want to have. Of course, the number of e, uh, end-user applications is huge, uh, and we won't even start going into them now. Uh, development tools and environments. Well, you know, many of the proprietary tools that were around five or ten years ago, for which people charged money, those are gone, or they're free. Now, a long time ago, I started and ran a a software tools company, and fortunately we were able to uh, sell some proprietary licenses. But it was one of the first programs that products that contained uh, free and open source software in the product. So, uh, so when you bought, signed our commercial license, it included an acknowledgement that there was uh, BSD code in there. So, so I, I like to measure the, um, how much of my life I can spend using open source software, only open source software. That's not perfect. I'm not perfect because I'm not religious about it. But, uh, but you can do almost everything with, with, uh, with Floss. You can um, keep track of the number of times that you actually have to depend on proprietary software. And it's an interesting exercise if you haven't done it to see you know, how much you can rely on, on open source for, you, for everything you need. I must admit that I use Photoshop elements, but, um, oh well. <laughs> so, so we're really talking about how do we advocate for floss in all the right places. Uh, commercial software is backed by sales and marketing. The single vendor open source products are also backed by sales and marketing. Those companies, whether they have open core products or pure open source products, they have changed the business model to work very much like those of proprietary software companies. They have a sales team, they have marketing, they have, uh, they have to have support and training. Those are the kinds of things that government and business customers want. But pure software, pure f f flaw software that doesn't come through a vendor 
things that come from foundations and from the larger community, that relies more on word of mouth. You know, why do people use some of these products? Because they have good reputations and because the project leaders have done a good job of communicating about them. They've grown the community, they've raised awareness. So, just a few things to close. Uh, first of all, uh, our community, the free and open source software community, and I would include everyone who came to this event in that community. We spend a lot of time talking to people who already believe in free and open source software. So our challenge is to spread the message to those who aren't yet believers. And because of the strength of free and open source software, all of these uh, infrastructure platforms, things like OpenStack and Linux, uh, Apache products, uh, projects, I should say. Uh, Floss is the future of computing. There's going to be room for proprietary software. I love my iPad, but it's, you know, it's going to live alongside uh, a lot of the free and open source software that we're talking about here. So. I want to thank you very much for your attention and thanks for the invitation to speak.